The world of magic introduced in the Harry Potter book series has inspired imagination in people young and old. We have all wondered what it would be like to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, dreaming of being sorted into one of the four houses and competing for the House Cup. Well now that day is here and the competition begins in Harry Potter House Cup Competition, which was designed by Nate Heiss and published by the op who helped sponsor this video. Hey everyone, my name is Mike Murphy of the Brothers Murph and I'm here at Board Game Geek. Before we pick up our wands and take our first classes, I think we ought to learn how to play, so grab your books and cauldrons and this is how you play Harry Potter House Cup Competition. Harry Potter House Cup Competition is a competitive game for two to four aspiring witches or wizards. The game will take place over seven rounds in which you will try to bring ultimate glory to your Hogwarts house through proficiency in classes, learning lessons, and overcoming challenges. But before the game can begin, we need to be sorted into houses, so let's go over the setup. The player who most recently went to school goes first and chooses one of the four houses of Hogwarts. They will receive the three students belonging to that house in their common room player board. They will place level trackers on each class for all three of their students. The classes are Potions, Charms, and Defense Against the Dark Arts, and each student will have the opportunity to gain levels in each of the classes to help with challenges and lessons. Each other player, in turn, will choose from the remaining houses and collect their student tokens and level trackers. In addition, the first and second player will receive two knowledge tokens and two basic lesson cards. The third player will receive an additional knowledge token, and the fourth player will receive a magic token and an easy challenge in addition to their lessons and knowledge tokens. Now it's time to set up the central board. Here, your students will be able to go to various spaces to gain knowledge and magic tokens, level up in classes, and more. First, place the board in the center of the table with a supply of magic and knowledge tokens nearby. Place the house cup hourglass display off to the side with each house's colored gems nearby. Each gem is worth 10 points and will be how you track your score in the game. Shuffle the basic and advanced lesson cards separately and place them in their indicated spaces on the central board, flipping three basic and advanced cards face up. Next, do the same for easy and hard challenge cards. Place location cards in their indicated spaces with a level 1 location face up, two level 2 locations face down, and a final level 3 location face down. These location spaces will be spots for your students to visit and will change from game to game. The three face down location cards will be revealed in rounds 2, 4, and 6. Finally, place the round tracker on space 1. And the game is ready to begin. Each round will be broken up into two phases. The first will focus on placing students at various spaces and learning lessons for bonuses, and the second phase will focus on completing challenges which will come with various perks and which will score you points. So let's take a closer look at how a round plays out. Starting with the first player and then moving around the table, you'll take turns placing one of the students in your common room onto an unoccupied space on the central board, keeping in mind that some spaces are not available in two and three player games. The library spaces will always gain players' knowledge tokens, with the bottom two spaces allowing to draw a face-up lesson card or choose a face-up hard challenge card on the bottom space. You may store any knowledge and magic tokens on the bottom left of your player board. Visiting spaces in the professor's office will gain you magic tokens in addition to face-up lesson cards, hard challenge cards, and even the first player token, but keep in mind that any space that shows magic or knowledge tokens on the student space requires that player to pay those resources to place a student there. Classroom spaces allow your students to gain levels in their classes. The three leftmost spaces each grant one level in potions, charms, or defense against the dark arts to the student who visited the space. Additionally, each space allows the player to draw a face-up easy challenge card. The three classroom spaces in the right column allow players to level up classes of their choice. The top two allow players to level up either the same class twice or two different classes once, and the bottom space any number of students can occupy to gain a level of their choice and a face-up lesson card. These three classroom spaces have additional costs associated with them. The location cards can also be visited if they are unoccupied, but usually require a student to have a minimum number of levels in classes. On each turn, players must place a student on the board, but in addition, players can also learn a lesson. Each lesson shows a minimum number of levels needed in one of that student's classes and may cost magic or knowledge tokens. The chosen student must meet the requirement for the lesson to complete it and then will receive the bonus at the bottom which may help that student or another student belonging to your house. You may learn a lesson before or after you place a student token and can use the bonuses and level ups immediately upon gaining them. Keep an eye out for your class levels, as each time any class level reaches 5, you must pay a magic token as your magical abilities are growing considerably. Players will take turn learning lessons and placing student tokens until everyone has placed all three students belonging to their house, and then the game proceeds to phase 2, challenges. Each player, in turn order, may attempt a maximum of two easy challenges or one easy and one hard challenge. 
In order to complete a challenge, you must assign one or more students to it. Using multiple students allows you to combine their class levels as two heads are often better than one. With the assigned students, you must meet the requirements in class levels and pay any knowledge tokens shown on the card. If you can't quite muster the levels in class, you ought to use a little magic to help you out. Here, you can turn in magic tokens to cover a lack of class levels. Each magic token you discard will count as an additional level in a class, and you may turn in as many magic tokens as you like to get to the requirements of the challenge. Note that using magic tokens will not actually raise your level in a class, it will simply help you get through a challenge. Magic is not a replacement for knowledge, unfortunately, and may never replace a knowledge token. Stay in school, kids, magical or otherwise. If you succeed in meeting the requirements for a challenge, gain the bonuses at the bottom. Oftentimes, this will mean gaining points for your house, and every 10 points means a gem being added to the house cup hourglass display. For instance, 40 points for Gryffindor will add four gems. If a challenge allows you to level up in a class and you have multiple students assigned to that challenge, you will choose only one of them to receive a level up. You may then move on to the second challenge if you are attempting one and follow the same steps. Once all players have attempted their challenges, the next round begins with the first player marker moving to the player who claimed the first player token. Each round plays out in the same way with additional spaces being revealed in rounds 2, 4, and 6. The additional location spaces will require players to be more advanced in their classes to visit them but offer enticing bonuses. After the seventh round has been completed, the game ends and scoring takes place. Every gem in the House Cup Hourglass display is worth 10 points for your house. In addition, every class level tracker at the maximum level of 7 will be worth 10 points. Finally, players can turn in sets of knowledge and magic tokens for an additional 10 points for every pair you have. The player with the most points claims the House Cup Championship and wins. If there's a tie, the victory goes to the player who completed the most hard challenges, and if a tie still persists, the player who completed the most total challenges wins. If there is still a tie, both players win and share custody of the House Cup until next year when the competition begins again. And that is how you play Harry Potter House Cup competition. This game is all about learning and then using that knowledge to challenge yourself to become an even greater witch or wizard. And the whole competition takes place in one of our favorite magical stories and features those famous faces from the Harry Potter series. To learn more about Harry Potter House Cup competition, visit its page at boardgamegeek.com and join the discussion. And until next time, I'm Mike Murphy, and that is how you play Harry Potter House Cup competition. Have a magical day.